Hello and welcome back to iClone 3D where we discuss tips, tricks and tutorials for some of the leading animation softwares and today we've got a tutorial about a few different things. I'm going to cover camera setups, how the cameras work, I'm going to cover the timeline and kind of how to navigate the timeline. It gets really fidgety at times and then we're going to look at kind of some basic light setups that you can do in your scene. Now. If we just go over to file, I'm going to open a project for you that I created earlier. So it saves a bit of time and you can kind of see a quick example setup of what I did earlier. I am going to do this in real time, so just bear with me, guys. But um, as soon as that loads into the scene, you can already see, you know, that's a really kind of well lit scene. It's, you know, taking some time with that to kind of get that looking how it looks now. First things first, we're going to discuss cameras. So I can see that I've already got a camera set up. So I'm just going to come down to my scene tab and I'm just going to delete that camera and we'll start from scratch. So when you start your scene, you'll automatically be put in the preview camera. Now up here, you can select your cameras when you kind of input them in the scene. But for now, we'll just have your preview camera in there and the switch camera. We'll discuss the switch camera a bit later. For now, we're going to look at preview camera. So this effectively is where you'll do kind of all your work if you've got cameras set up and you don't want to kind of mess around with the angles you've got set. So when you kind of, when you do find an angle that you're happy with in your preview cam, let's say this angle for now, what you then do is you'll come up here to create and you'll create your camera. And there's linear and there's orbit. We're going to be looking at linear camera today. Uh, the orbit camera is a new function in iClone 8 and that basically allows you to orbit around uh, the subject in a 360 manner. Haven't used it yet, and I will do a tutorial on that as soon as possible. But for now, we'll just set up a quick linear camera, and as soon as you've done that, you can see in this tab up here, you've now got your camera added. Now, what you can do if you know, you're know you like me and you're a bit of a cinematographer, you can go down here and you can actually rename that camera. So we'll rename that to medium shot, uh, medium shot side. Now that's just a kind of simple way to you know remember your cameras for later on because it can get you know a bit fidgety further along down the line. So that's kind of how you set up a basic camera. Now what we'll do then, this is our angle now we've got set. So as you can see if we scrub down the timeline nothing happens with that camera, there's no motion. It's just um, a kind of camera on a tripod if you like. Now over here in your modify tab, you'll see you've got full control of that camera and those functions. And you know, if you're ever in this tab and you're wondering how to kind of get back to your, you know, character modify tab, you can simply just click on your character and then that will bring up the character tab. And then if you want to view the camera tab again, you can just go up here and you can click on that camera and that'll bring your camera up, as you can see, medium shot side. So that's just a quick way in case you kind of get lost there. So when you're in the camera tab, you've got full control over your focal distance. So you can see here 20 millimeters, 35 millimeters, 50 millimeters, etc. Now, just a quick tip before I go on, because this is something that kind of used to get me a bit confused. When you have your camera set up in these small spaces like this, if you go into your preview camera, you can see we're still in that small space. So when we zoom out just a little bit, you can see now we're taken to outside of the the building. Now, you may be in here and you know, you may need to kind of navigate your scene without messing up your camera angles and you'll go over to your camera tab and you won't see here the preview camera and you'll try to change the field of view of the preview but you can see it won't change. Now, the reason being is you have to actually set your preview camera in the desired view before you add any camera. And once you've added a camera, you then no longer have any control over that. So what you'd need to do effectively is if you delete your camera, you'll now see it goes back to your preview camera. And what you'd want to do is set your desired view before you then set a camera. And that will just ensure you've got enough space to really navigate your scene when you want to begin kind of, you know, editing animations, etc. So yeah, just a cool tip that used to get me stuck because I used to kind of, I'd be in this really wide view and I wouldn't be able to change the preview view. So just make sure you do that before you set any cameras. Um, also, you can change the field of view. You can go even wider if you just come over to the focal length 
and you can click on this tab and you can go even wider just to get as much view as you kind of need in that scene. So I'll keep it at 20 for now. That pretty much is enough for me to see around the whole scene. And then we'll just go back up here to create. We'll add a linear camera. We'll go down here and we'll just name that medium, medium shot for now, side. Okay, so once you've named that, we'll then get that field of view back. We'll go to, I think it was 35 millimeters. And then we'll just kind of get that field of view back to what it was. So that's kind of basically how to, you know, set your camera, set the view that you want, how far, how wide, your focal distance. And um, yeah, that's pretty much kind of that for cameras. Now, uh, one of my subscribers asked me to kind of go through kind of different shot lists. So just really quickly, 20 millimeters is your wide shot. That's what your class is, a wide shot. And you can kind of, you know, see pretty much the whole scene in the whole of your subject. We've then got 35 millimeters, which is uh, very predominantly used in the film world. You may have heard of, you know, saying such as 35 millimeter film, etc. It's a very well used camera angle, a camera lens, sorry. Very well used lens in the film world and in cinematography. People tend to, you know, go with the 35 millimeter lens a lot. And, you know, this is good for kind of all round shots, conversation shots with two characters over the shoulder, you know, really good for them type of moments. And, you know, really good for kind of close up shots as well, where you kind of don't want to be too close to the subject, but you just want to get close enough to give the audience like a really nice feel of that subject. That's your 35 millimeter lens. Then you've got your 50 millimeter lens, which is known to be the view that we naturally see in, uh, you know, the, the human eye naturally kind of sees things in a 50 millimeter perspective. So a 50 millimeter lens is great for when you kind of want to give people a look that they're used to seeing every day with their natural own eyes. You know, I hope that makes sense. Uh, it, didn't, it didn't make much sense to me when I learned it about 10 years ago, but hopefully it makes a little bit of sense to you. So yeah, the 50 millimeter is kind of the same as the human perspective, how we naturally see objects. We see in like a 50 millimeter lens apparently. So good for your kind of more kind of extreme close up shots when you want to kind of see a lot more detail on the subject. And um, you know, great also for kind of shots where you want to zoom out and get a bit more depth, however, in that shot, as you can see there, kind of gives it a little bit more, a little bit more of a depth, a little, a little bit more of a kind of closer pull to the subject, even though you're further away. And uh, the other lens is 80 millimeters. You've got 105 and you've got 200 millimeters, 80 millimeter lens. And you know, the, the, you know, the higher the millimeter, the closer you're effectively gonna get to your subject. Now these are real world lenses, so they do kind of, register as real world focal lengths. They do kind of replicate the same image you'd get as if filming on a real camera. So that's the kind of amazing thing about, you know, about the different focal lengths and, you know, the advantage of using them, especially if you're from a cinematography background like myself, then, you know, you'd know all too well how important it is to get your kind of right focal length, depending on what you want to kind of communicate in your scene. So yeah, that's a bit about cameras. Uh, down here, you've got uh, a few other settings that I don't usually mess around with. You've got your aperture, you know, your aspect ratio. Uh, you know, I tend not to mess about with them. Uh, your other important area you wanna look at is depth of field. Now this is how you would effectively blur the background in your scene. Uh, this is how you'll get a kind of really nice bokeh going. So if we just come back into our camera tab, when you activate depth of field, if you just hit click pick target, and then you can just click on the target that you want to keep in focus and that will pull focus straight onto your subject. Now bear in mind, once you have set the focal distance, if you try and move closer to the subject, you'll see that gets a bit blurred out. So you do have to kind of readjust your depth of field every time you kind of move the camera once you've set it. So, you know, it could get a bit fiddly if you're not really used to kind of how depth of field works in a real world, but you know, exactly kind of the same as real world. If you move your camera once you've set it, it will then kind of go out of focus and you will have to reset the focal length. So just be aware of that. And um, if you do kind of, you know, if you do change your focal length or you, you, you do kind of zoom into the shot, just make sure to kind of readjust and uh, pick the target so it gets realigned back in focus. 
So that's one of the ways to use depth of field. Now there is um, some functions down here that you can mess about with to kind of uh, get a bit more blur out of the shot, blur the background a little bit more. As you can see here, we're getting a bit more blur and you can do that until you get to a kind of level that you're happy with. Not, not overdoing it, as you see here, you start to blur out the subject and the microphone that's in the shot. So, you know, just get it to a nice level that you're happy with. And that's how you can get kind of maximum blur out of your scene. Now, that's pretty much, that's pretty much kind of it to do with cameras, etc. Um, if I've missed anything or there's anything you kind of want me to go over again, we can do that. Uh, just quickly while we're on it, you can create multiple cameras. So I'll add another camera to that scene and then that will bring up a new camera in your tab here. If you click on that, you can then rename it, which I won't rename for now, but you can rename it to whatever you like. And then that's your second camera. You can change the field of view and uh, you can go back into your camera up here and you can, we'll turn that, we'll turn the depth of field off for now. So there you have it. Now that's another camera angle that we've got set up. And if you just go up here and change back, you'll see you've got your, well, what was meant to be a medium shot has now turned into a close-up shot. So we've got a close-up shot and then we've got a kind of, you know, medium side shot here. And that's just how to kind of set up multiple cameras. You can, you know, set up as many cameras as you need in your scene and they'll come up here. And, um, you know, you could just get, you know, get all your angles kind of covered and set. And um, that will be kind of all in position before you start your scene. And then you can see when you click on your cameras, all your cameras are set to your different kind of fields of view. So really cool, especially for, you know, a cinematographer like myself, um, who, you know, when you are on a real set, sometimes you've only got one camera. So that's, that's cameras and that's how to kind of, you know, set up your cameras and um, position them. Now let's just look at kind of animating a camera really quickly. We'll just look at how to get some animation out of that. So for now, I'm gonna come up to the camera tab and I'm gonna turn off the depth of field. So let's make sure we're in the right camera. Okay, for some reason. Okay, so if this does happen, as you can see, I've got my camera up here selected, but in the modifier tab, it's showing as camera zero. If that happens to you and you're kind of trying to figure out how to get your camera back here, all you simply do is you go over to your scene tab and you just go down to the camera in the scene tab. As you can see, it's on camera zero, so that's why that one's showing up. So you just simply click back onto your camera that you wanna show there. That would then display and we can go down here and we're gonna turn off the depth of field for this shot. Now, I'm just gonna show you how to quickly animate your camera. So if we wanted a camera, say, you know, tracking in and out, uh, let's get a nice tracking out shot. So it will start kind of close up and then we're gonna get a track out shot. So what we'll do is we'll go down to the timeline. So what we'll do is we'll just pull the timeline to however many frames we want the camera to track out. We'll go with 400 for now. And then all we simply do is scroll out on your mouse. If you've got the mouse with a wheel, you can literally scroll out and that will then, and then you kind of scroll out and redirect how you want your final position to end. And then if we go back to the timeline and we scroll to the left, you'll see that's now been animated. So when we press play, you can now see some basic animation, a basic tracking out shot. Now, if you wanted to make that go a little bit slower, for example, or a little bit faster, what you do is you come down here into this tab and you can see here on your camera, it's got camera zero, so we're on the wrong camera. We need to go to medium shot camera. And now you can see your little, little bars to adjust that. And if we pull it more to the left, that will get faster. And if we pull that more to the right, that will get a whole lot slower. So just one of the really kind of cool ways to, you know, amend the speed of the movement once you've captured the movement. Um, and, you know, you can, you know, really kind of adjust that and get some really, really good cinematic feeling behind your shots. Um, so that's kind of, that's pretty much how to get some basic motion. Uh, if we go to our second camera, uh, we'll go here, let's click on our subject and we'll just get a kind of motion that's twirling around like that now. Oh, that looks kind of cool when the light kind of pops into shot. So we'll get a motion that kind of rotates around. So again, we just drag our timeline, 
to however many frames we want the shot to go on for. We'll go 600 this time. And then we simply just, um, simply just hold command on your keyboard, or that might be Alt if you're using Windows. And you just hold on the Alt key and right click and you can just twist your camera around into the position, the end position that you want to be in. And then once we grab the timeline and bring that back to the beginning, you'll see the motion has been added. So, you know, just some really kind of quick, simple ways to get the motion together. Now, if you wanted to say, for example, say for example, you wanted um, there to be a switch, you wanted the camera to go from that and then cut into your other shot. And then you wanted it to cut to that. How do you do that? Very simple. So what we're going to do, effectively, you're going to want to come up here to your first camera or the camera that you want to start on. And you're going to want to scroll it to wherever you want it to stop in the timeline. Let's just say at 200 for now. And then you simply come down here to the switcher and you right click and you go down to your camera list and then you click on the next camera that you want it to switch to. So we're in the medium shot. We're going to go to the next camera, which is camera. It's just labeled as camera and we're going to click on that camera. Now, as you can see, that brings up a little tab here and that shows that that's been marked as the point where it should change, make the cut. So we'll go to the beginning. Now to view that back, what you need to do is simply go up here and you make sure that you're on the first camera that you've selected, which is a medium shot. That has to be kind of the first camera you start on. And then you click on the switch, switch button and hit play and you should see the switch come around this point. There we go, perfect, so that's switched and that's cut into your second camera. So that's just quickly how to switch the camera in a scene and if you wanted that to come in a bit later, you can drag that here, then that switch will come in a little bit later so we'll have a little bit more time on this shot. Then you should see the switch and that reveals the light source. So that's just really quickly how to kind of use the camera system, guys, I hope that really helps and um, kind of really, uh, you know, gets your creative juices flowing, helps you kind of, you know, get creative and set up some amazing camera shots. Um, it was just a quick tutorial. I did say I'd go over the lights as well. Uh, we can do that in this tutorial too. So let me just kind of run over some really quick light setups. Or actually what I'll do guys, um, because that might take a little bit more time, I might actually make uh, another tutorial on that so yeah if you guys want to see another tutorial on how to kind of get some light setups like what you're seeing here uh, you know let me know and then I'll make another tutorial on that and just show you how to get these kind of really cool neon glow lights in your scene so hope that helps anyway for the kind of camera angles um, really hope that kind of helps you to like I say get creative and hopefully see you again for another tutorial